This is an area that's extremely vulnerable to flooding. Half of the watershed is in Nogales, Arizona, and half of the watershed is in Nogales, Sonora, Mexico. Fallecimientos de personas que se son arrastradas por el arroyo. Los arroyos coinciden con las calles, coinciden con el sistema de drenaje sanitario en Nogales, Sonora. De, de proteger la infraestructura. Se está involucrando a la comunidad y eso permite que se apropien del problema y por lo mismo de la solución. This is Ambos Nogales, twin cities on opposite sides of the U.S.-Mexico border with a shared problem. For over 100 years, flooding has caused damage, ruined livelihoods, and taken lives. But new research suggests that flooding hazards can be mitigated using rock detention structures and green infrastructure. Over 300,000 people call Ambos Nogales home many of whom reside in colonias, vulnerable communities on the U.S.-Mexico border that lack adequate housing or infrastructure, like water and sewer lines, and are in general not well equipped to handle the perils associated with extreme flooding. Oh, this is pretty. You can kind of see how like, gentle the, the creek is flowing here. Dr. Laura Norman of the U.S. Geological Survey has been working with partners on both sides of the border to study the hydrology of ambos nogales and the effectiveness of using nature-based solutions to mitigate the effects of flooding. When it rains in Nogales, the water comes into the mountain fronts and is channeled across the colonias and into the arroyos and down into the floodplain at ambos nogales. Our biggest obstacle to addressing flooding in Ambos Nogales is that people are already living in the floodplains and more and more move in every day. Because necessity is the mother of invention, we began to brainstorm about how we could use science to design nature-based solutions within the pre-existing city boundaries and around the people that were living there. So when I started working in Nogales 15 years ago, the installation of gabions was suggested and the USGS was hired to identify the best location using models and partners installed them to the best spots. The most exciting part about this research is that we were developing this idea of a sponge city long before it became popular. Sponge cities incorporate multiple low-tech nature-based solutions to reduce flooding, filter polluted stormwater, and create more green space. Gabions and green infrastructure help to regulate water and store it within the system's sponge for longer periods of time, allowing it to slowly release downstream. Working binationally with multiple stakeholders for decades, we're identifying where water wants to go and prioritizing that space for water harvesting on the landscape. Ahorita mismo estoy parado en una infraestructura de gavión que tiene el principal objetivo de retener sedimentos, aguas arriba, cuando se presentan fuertes lluvias, reducir la velocidad para que aguas abajo, esta cantidad de agua no cause daños o estragos a la población. En contraste, si este tipo de infraestructura no estuviese situada en este lugar, ocasionaría un problema muy grave de erosión y al momento de bajar aguas arriba, corrientes muy fuertes, inclusive pudiese generar desastres materiales, pero lo peor, eh, pérdidas humanas que transitan por esta zona en donde estas aguas caudalosas pasan y causan todo ese tipo de estragos. Este proyecto inició en 2006, 2007, 21 puntos que eran factibles para construir este tipo de infraestructura y poder eh, ayudar a mitigar el problema de inundaciones en ambos nogales se ha continuado con, con estos proyectos que son de gran utilidad porque son de menor costo, pero con gran utilidad porque detienen el agua, se filtra a través de la cortina de gaviones y tiene un menor impacto hacia el arroyo los nogales. Using hydrologic models, I was able to retrofit gabions and green infrastructure in various channels and urban areas to consider their impact. Our models show that gabion rock detention structures can reduce the high peak flows for smaller rainfall events by a half and have some impact on larger events. The model also predicted that gabions would reduce sediment, which would help improve water quality downstream and reduce impact on the existing sewer and water lines. 
This natural infrastructure lowers peak flows and helps to negate overbank flows that can be hazardous and even deadly. The models also portray the proposed urban green infrastructure to decrease runoff, peak flows, and sediment yield. Dr. Francisco Lara Valencia and Claudia Hill incorporated the USGS studies and modeling results into the first city plan for Nogales, Sonora. Since then, we've all been working to accommodate more natural and green infrastructure and sharing our ideas by nationally. Francisco has also been instrumental in organizing events for middle school students to plant green gardens throughout Ambos Nogales. One important aspect that we were able to accomplish is to show the students in the middle school from Nogales, Sonora, Nogales, Arizona, that whatever they do in their little space, their home, their school, has an implication for the whole water chain. <laughs> In 2004, I began working on the USGS Colonias Monitoring Program to identify colonias, which are rural environmental justice neighborhoods that lack adequate infrastructure. Due to lack of services, there are often concerns with the drinking water in these areas. We worked with students and professors on both sides of the border to compare lifestyles, water quality, potential disease, and perceived flood risk in the colonias and more affluent areas of Ambos Nogales. For example, in 2012, we found more E. coli concentrations in the colonias, but even the more affluent areas reported high rates of gastrointestinal illness and depicted coliform contamination that was significantly higher in the summer monsoon than in cooler winter months, suggesting climate-related and flooding impacts on the drinking water supply. Ten years later, we explored binational community perceptions of flooding and preferences for watershed management to address the flooding and found that residents themselves recommend awareness campaigns and more implementation of green infrastructure and natural infrastructure in dryland streams to manage the stormwater runoff. When we talk to kids here in Nogales, Arizona, and we ask them about what do you do when it rains in, in the area? And, and they said, well, I'm very careful in not going across the border because I know it's dangerous. But many of them had to do because they live over there because they have their kids, their moms, their homes on the other side of the en el tema de agua de lluvia, entonces pudiera parecer difícil resolver un problema del otro lado de la frontera con regulaciones diferentes. Sin embargo, la colaboración de un equipo y de, de las autoridades de ambos lados de la frontera, de instituciones binacionales, nos han fortalecido para poder trabajar de manera como conjunta y trabajar como una sola, no como dos ciudades, eh, porque el agua no respeta fronteras, no la respeta. I've been fortunate to work with such productive and innovative people people on both sides of the border here. The USGS has been working with federal, state, and local partners to support successful nature-based solutions to the flooding in Ambos Nogales for the past two decades. We've really made a lot of progress in starting this sponge city, but there's still a lot more to do and more to understand. 